Hey, what's up everyone? Welcome back to Tokyo, Japan. My name is Joe Alam, and for the past six weeks I've been traveling around Japan and taking photos mostly with the Fujifilm X100F. And let me tell you, first and foremost, it has delivered. So this is kind of, I guess, uh, an immediate recommendation for this camera. Generally, the videos that I want to make, uh, I want to recommend good products and good cameras. I don't really want to put negativity on my channel. So if this is a camera you're interested in, then hopefully this video will give you some insights into what it's like shooting with it. All right, so first and foremost, why did I buy the Fujifilm X100F? Well, if you haven't seen the video of where I actually purchased it whilst I was in Tokyo, um, the main reasons are I've been looking to kind of simplify uh, my shooting setup for a long time. Because yeah, when you're traveling, one of the key things you need to be aware of is just the weight and size of your equipment. Um, so by having a much smaller camera, it means that generally you're carrying less. Uh, now I can't speak 100% for myself on that because if I'm making YouTube videos then obviously I have to carry this equipment as well. Um, but it does make it a little bit easier in the sense that my photo stuff could be lighter. Now the thing is, the gear that you shoot with doesn't necessarily make you a better photographer. However, when you shoot with a camera that really inspires you, that makes you really enjoy taking photos and makes you want to go out and shoot with that camera, then you generally go out more and if you're going out more you shoot better and you just improve your photography so there is merit in having a camera that you feel comfortable with and that you're at one with um, certain cameras the specs may be amazing but the actual usability might not match what you want so as I said I've been looking for something that's kind of small discreet and perfect for travel now this is obviously tiny uh, this is great but Let's talk about the specs of this camera. So you can actually get this in either silver or black. The sensor on this is a 24 megapixel APS-C. Uh, it's actually the same sensor as what's used in an X-T2 and X-Pro2. Um, so the image quality is fantastic through this. And then the lens on this is a 23mm uh, f2. Uh, the aperture goes all the way up to f16. Uh, now this is a fixed lens system. A lot of people do ask, can you change the lens or anything? You can get some adapters, um, so you can get a wide angle or a telephoto adapter. Now will convert it down to I think an 18mm or up to the equivalent of a 35mm. So this camera can either be a fully automatic or a fully manual setup. Uh, so you have control dials on the body itself for your exposure comp, your ISO, your shutter speed and your aperture on the actual lens ring. I generally tend to shoot in aperture priority when I'm doing street stuff which is where I would set my aperture and I'd leave the shutter to auto and my ISO to auto and that makes it fast for me to shoot with. Uh, the exposure metering is pretty accurate, it's pretty quick um, and that is you know, a great setup for street use. Now one of the key features with the X100 series and uh, this is also the same with the X-Pro2 and uh, I think a couple of other Fujifilm cameras is this OVF EVF um, I guess hybrid viewfinder. So if we turn it on and I just look through the viewfinder using this little switch at the front I can switch from optical to electronic viewfinder and this is just an interesting setup because not many cameras have the ability to switch between the two and of course depending on your preference you may want to go for one or the other I personally shoot I think about 99% of the time with the electronic viewfinder so what do I love about this camera um, okay so first and foremost I've already mentioned this the size and weight it is so portable but the quality is incredible 24 megapixels um, so if I do want to print stuff or if I want to crop things then I'm not limited by that previous 16 megapixel on the X100. Now another thing is the camera is incredibly fast to set up and start up. So literally by switching from off to on, this is how fast it is ready to take a shot. So if I go on, shot, shot, off. So compared to say something like my Sony a7R which I'm filming this on, uh, the startup time is just impeccably fast. Now due to the size and construction of the camera, the actual shutter mechanism is incredibly quiet. Uh, it's so, so quiet. But you can also go to an electronic shutter if you want a complete silent shutter. Now I've already mentioned that the picture quality has blown me away. It's been so sharp and just such a high quality. But what has really, really surprised me is the low light performance. Uh, so the ISO on this, goes up to 12,800 as standard. You can extend it to 25,600 and 51,200 if you wanna go for those extended ISO ranges. Now I have shot some stuff at 12,800 whilst out and about taking some street shots and they've come out really great. Now, yes, you do sometimes get some noise in the shots, but sometimes that little bit of grittiness and graininess actually helps um, with the texture of the photo and just kind of pulls you know, a bit more, uh, I guess, personality into the images. Now I'm not trying to fob off 
using noise as a way to generate style in the photos. But what I mean is it just, I don't know, it's kind of a hard way to say this, but if you shoot with it, you'll understand what I mean, that it, it doesn't detract from the image if it does introduce noise. Oh, there's going to be some comments about that, I swear. Uh, now, some people have also mentioned that sometimes you get this weird pastel-y, um, almost like paint effect um, with the noise reduction in the camera. Now, if you do happen to notice that on your camera, drop down your noise reduction to minus four or whatever the lowest setting is, uh, and you will continue to get those sharp images at high ISOs in low light. This kind of does look like the little brother to the X-Pro2. It's like the smaller form factor, very similar styling, uh, same usability, pretty much the same button layout almost, I think. And it's just so kind of friendly to use. Uh, it's not intimidating if you're taking shots of people, um, say you're traveling. Again, people may look at it and think like, oh, he's just a tourist. He's just taking photos of, you know, whatever, not realizing that the quality is actually really, really high. Um, compare it to say a DSLR and people might think like, whoa, this is a big camera. They kind of a bit jarred by it. Um, I feel like you'd get more natural shots using a smaller street style camera like this. And what I love from the larger cameras that they brought into this is the focus lever. So you can actually use this little joystick on the back to select your focus point nice and fast. The autofocus is incredibly fast anyway. Um, again, I've heard from previous owners of other X100 cameras that it wasn't that great. This one definitely works very fast and I've not had any issues whilst using it. So that's kind of like a rundown of a lot of the things that have really struck me as positive with this camera. Uh, now let's go through some of the things that I kind of deem negative. Now one of the first things I'll point out is some of the uh, physical design aspects of this camera. Now I believe this is the same on the X-T10, it's also the same on the X-T20, um, and that is the position of the tripod mount next to the battery door, not in the center. I just don't understand why wouldn't you put the tripod mount in line with the lens. Um, also it means that if you put a plate on the bottom of the camera, you can't open the battery door. So if you are like using tripods or other things, you can't chop and change your battery halfway through without taking your plate on and off, which defeats the object of having a quick release plate for certain things. So that to me is a bit of a design oversight and I'm not really sure why it's like that. But you know, it is what it is and uh, can't really do too much about it. Now you can actually get a little bottom grip. Um, it's like a little bottom plate with a separate battery door hole, uh, and a little tripod mount in there as well that's in the center um, and it extends your grip slightly. But, this is a big but, it costs 85 squiddly diddly doos. Like, I'm not gonna pay 85 quid for a plate to go on the bottom of the camera. Um, there may be some third party ones you can look at, but official Fujifilm one, I mean, come on, that's not right. Now, further hardware things that I've kind of noticed with the camera, um, I was a tiny bit disappointed that it didn't actually come with a lens hood. And uh, that's not to say that you can't get one. Um, again, you can get third party ones or you can get the official Fujifilm one. Um, now, the official one is very nice. It's a nice metal lens hood that just kind of sticks out over the lens. Um, but again, it's expensive. Uh, it's expensive for a lens hood. And to me, it's something that should come with the camera, if I'm really honest. Now, I was also disappointed that the screen isn't a flip-out screen. I was really hoping that for this version, they were gonna introduce the flip-out screen similar to what they have on the X-T2 and the X-T20 and such. When you're shooting street, sometimes you do just wanna kinda like have it down low. You just really wanna like shoot from the hip sometimes. And having that flip-out screen does make it a lot easier. It's not a big deal. Um, it doesn't really phase me that it's not there, but having used cameras that do have it, I realize it's not a gimmick, it's something that's actually incredibly useful and more manufacturers need to include them. I'm talking to you Sony, give me a flip out screen so that I can see what I'm doing when I'm vlogging. Now what could be either a minor point or a major point, um, something that's missing from this camera but it also could be related to the cost of the camera itself, is there's no weather sealing. Uh, I would have really loved to have seen this completely weather resistant so that I could use it in the rain or something like that. Because um, there have been times when I'm out on the streets especially in Tokyo, which is beautiful in the rain. So many colorful umbrellas and everything glows and reflects. And I'd love to be shooting with this, but when it's raining, I just don't feel confident using it. Now, the final slight negative that I want to mention about this camera is to do with the aperture ring. So you'll see on the front, we've got two little grips on the side to make it easy to spin. Uh, as you spin the ring around, sometimes I kind of wish there was a third grip on the bottom, just to make it a little bit easier and give you an extra area where you can grip the ring and change the aperture. Uh, again, it's minor, but I'd like to see it in a future version. Now, as I said at the start, I have thoroughly enjoyed using this camera. Uh, I've only been using it for a few weeks, but I would recommend it to so many different types of photographer, whether you're a complete beginner, uh, if you are a 
pro photographer and you just want like a, a small, easy to use or easy to carry around camera, then no matter what, like if you really want to experiment with settings and learning photography, you can fill the brief with everything. So final thought on this camera. I just love it so much. It's so great to see how this X100 series has developed itself over the last seven years from when it first launched. I'm incredibly happy that I've now jumped into this and I've got my own one to play around with. Uh, I'm shooting with it so much and I just think the pictures from it are just incredible to use. Now I'm not being paid to say this, I've not been sent anything from Fujifilm. Obviously in the past I have worked with them uh, on using the cameras, but I just, I'm so invested in their system now. I just really, really love it. If there's anything that I can pass on to you is that you should definitely go and test this camera out. Really consider it if you are looking to get a smaller uh, or travel size or if you want to get into photography, something like that. Do not discount this camera for being a small camera with a single fixed lens. It is a beast. It's such a great camera. All right, so I'm gonna end out this video here, but I will be doing some blog posts fairly soon. So I'm actually on the way back to the UK tomorrow, actually. Uh, by the time you're watching this, I'm not sure when that's gonna be. Um, but I will be back in the UK and I'm gonna be catching up with various blog posts on some videos that I've made in the past. So I'm gonna have loads of sample photos, more rundowns and thoughts on this camera and some of my other stuff as well. Likewise, I'm gonna be doing a photo editing tutorial in Lightroom on the photos that I've been doing in Tokyo. So a lot of you guys have been loving those and I'm also going to be releasing a set of presets uh, I'm just working out at the moment how best to do that and how to get them to you guys um, so that's all coming in the pipeline so I will leave you with that and thanks for watching make sure you subscribe to my channel if you haven't done so already my name is Joe Allen and I'll catch you in the next one see you later bye bye